Let's talk about using ChatGTP, ChatGPT, 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 ChatGPT. Sorry to say that. ChatGPT. Hi there. I want to talk about using ChatGPT. <laughs> ChatGPT in Neovis. Um, so I'm not going to. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Why is this so hard to say? Like, why can't they just use a name like Copilot? Hmm. It's a bot. It's an LLM. You can talk to it. You can ask it questions like, um, "How do I make an associative array in Zish?" I'm going to give you an answer. Now, this is a very simple interface. It's really just a chat interface. Um, there are much more powerful interfaces out there. The one thing I like about this one um, is that it streams the result back to you and you can do stuff while it's coming in as opposed to just watching a spinner. Um, so if you search for chat, if you search for chat GPT, Neovim, you're probably going to land on this plugin here, um, which has got 2,700 stars right now um, and a lot of features and it's very pretty. Um, I don't use ChatGPT very much, so I just wanted something a little bit simpler where I could just ask it questions. Um, if you want something more sophisticated and you're prepared to accept the potentially you know, larger dependency footprint, um, maybe you're already using some of these things, um, this might be a good option. Um, uh, this will give you a bunch of sophisticated commands for doing tasks like writing tests, fixing bugs, or, or simplementing, simplemente, as they say in Spain, simply implementing things. Um, so yeah, this is not my cup of tea. I prefer to start with something minimal. Um, and at this point I could go on a rant about how I'm not really a huge fan of LLMs, um, but whether I like it or not, they do help you save time some of the times. And so my small concession in the direction of using an LLM to help me out my work is using the chat interface. Um, and so uh, let's go back to the demo and show you uh, what I would use this thing for in, in like real life, I guess, or maybe not, but we'll come up with an, an artificial example. Um, this is one that I've asked it to do before, so I know it can do it. Um, and the funny thing is if I ask it like five different times, I get five different implementations. And so I'm a little bit nervous, like what is it going to give me? Um, I will find out anyway. Um, basically, I, I want I want a Lua function that I can call in NeoVim that will print the time since the last commit in the current repo. Let's see what it comes up with. It probably won't come up with what I want. I have to ask a follow-up question or two. Um, so let's have a read. You, you generally don't want to run this code untrusted because it sometimes hallucinates and produces garbage, but let's read this one and see what it says. Yeah, I can already tell you like I don't like this because <laughs> um, it's printing uh, relative date format. So let's say um, I want the date to be formatted as HHMMSS. Um, let's see what it comes up with now. So it is opening uh, git log, uh, getting the latest commit, getting the commit timestamp. Um, it is using OS date to format that and it's showing me the time of the last commit. I want the time since the last commit. I want the time since the last commit. Not the time of the last commit. Uh, let's see what it does here. I see you want the time elapsed from the last commit. So it's going to ramble on a bit. Um, funnily enough, I actually, like while that's rambling, I'm going to open a file over here, um, Zish exports. Well, you can see I've got my, um, my prompt here. Let me just put that somewhere you can read it easily. You are a helpful assistant who provides brief explanations of short and short code snippets, blah, blah, blah. Your user in it is an expert programmer. You should be as concise as possible. Obviously, concise, concision is not one of its strong points. Um, questions will be asked using Markdown. You should feel free to use Markdown syntax in your replies, which is why we've got this kind of nice syntax highlighting. Um, so, uh, what did we get? Uh, you can call this function. Uh, let's read the function now. Uh, oops, I'm in the wrong, the wrong place. Um, yeah, so it's still grabbing the topmost commit, grabbing the current time, it's calling to number on the commit time, which I guess will be okay. Um, then it is converting that to hours, minutes, and seconds in what looks to be a reasonable way, and then it's formatting it, and then it's printing it. 
I actually think, yeah, this looks reasonably good. So let's go up here, grab the whole thing. I'm going to stick it in a file. Well, let's put it in a place where I can easily require it. So I'm going to put it in, in with all my other Vim files. Config, NVim, Lua, Vincent, Demo, Lua. Um, and so let's paste it. Um, so one of the differences between this plugin that you saw me use and the other one I showed you in the browser is like, um, I can only talk to it, right? I can't automatically run the code. I can't tell it to update the code. If I want to make changes to it, I have to say, hey, can you, can you change this line? And then I have to paste it in again. I'm fine with that for now. Because I, I do like the fact that this thing is so small and um, easy to understand how it works. So um, it, this is defining a function, a global function by the look of it, which uh, is probably fine, I guess. So let's write that and then let's require it. Lua require. Vincent demo, and now I should have a function that I can call, and uh, it's writing it out, so I don't have to call print. I can just go Lua um, elapsed time since last commit, and it's printing it out for me. There we go, and it updates. Okay, so that works. And so that is a somewhat artificial example, um, but a more realistic one might be, for example, if I'm editing my dot files, um, I might want to know how some of this stuff works. So um, I can say, I'm going to explain this crap to me. Uh, what is this Zish prompt doing? Now I don't have to put it in fence code blocks, but I kind of like putting it like that so I can read it. Um, so let's uh, let's get it to answer what this thing is doing. Um, in reality, like this prompt is so complicated, it's, it's probably going to talk for like half an hour before I get to, to what I want. So I'm going to interrupt that, um, and then I'm going to see if I can ask another question. Um, what? does the, let's ask for a specific part of it. What does the sequence do? Changes the prompt based on whether the current shell is a super user, super user or not. So in general, I find with an interface like this, you're better off asking like narrow focus questions um, and expecting it to write long swathes of code for you uh, is probably not really the best way to use it. Um, so yeah, that's how I've been using it lately. Um, I guess what I'm gonna do for the rest of the screencast, I'm gonna show you two things. First of all, I'm gonna show you the implementation of the, the chat bot, and then I'm gonna talk in general kind of philosophically about you know, what I think LLMs are good for and kind of why I'm such a, an LLM skeptic. Um, so let's go to the, back to the browser. Um, this is the, the script I'm using. Um, it's by Adam Wolf, a former colleague of mine at Facebook. Um, and what I love about this um, is that it is so small that you can read it in like 10 minutes and understand what's going on and it's therefore easy to modify. Um, so it consists of a shell script, so you can uh, run this in the shell and talk to the bot that way if you want. It's also got the, the NVIM plugin, which is very simple, as you can see, it's not even 200 lines. Um, it's really just managing that window for you and talking to the shell bot executable, which I'll now show you, um, which is the thing that's doing the actual communication with the um, chat GPT the ChatGPT API. Um, so you can see here there's a file there that implements the communication with the API. Um, and then there's this that implements the main executable. Um, so these are only like a few dozen lines each, pretty easy to understand and modify. And so I made a little fork here um, with, as you can see here, a few commits on top with really just like some cos cosmetic changes to make it display um, better in my terminal um, and uh, fix a typo or two and uh, set the file type so that I can do some stuff over on the Vim side to make things look nice. So actually, that's probably worth showing you um, over on the room side. So let's go over here. I'm going to go to um, shellbot Lua. So I've got a syntax file, which as you can see, um, basically inherits from the markdown syntax file by sourcing it and then applies special styling to those headers. So you have a clear picture of like where your questions are and where the answers are. Um, and what else have I got? That's shellbotish. I've got the file type plugin um, that sets a few options for me. Um, it sets up a mapping uh, because the default mapping is control enter, which doesn't work inside Tmux to submit the prompt. So I made it option enter. Um, the other thing I've got is a um, shell bar, this after plugin, where I just, you know, once the plugin is loaded, I create the chat GPT, uh, the chat GPT command, which is what you saw um, me bring up the chat with. Um, and yeah, once again, I could say, uh, well, I'll just check this whole thing and I'll say, Explain this NeoVim Lua to me. Once again, I don't need the fenced code, the fenced code blocks, but I kind of like them. Oh my God, I'm having trouble typing. There we go. Um, 
and it will tell me about what it does. Um, so yeah, so that, that's the demo, um, and I've shown you the source code, and now I can get out of the, the philosophical rambling. Um, so yeah, why aren't I using a heavyweight plugin for this, um, and why am I only reluctantly now, you know, years after this stuff started to become available, actually beginning to incorporate it into my daily work? Well, my initial reluctance was due to the fact that these LLMs, while they're impressive in the sense that they can produce seemingly coherent answers to incredibly complex questions in a way that just defies intuition and belief, um, they're wrong about half the time. And so uh, I had an early experience using Copilot at GitHub in my work because we got you know, early access to it. I remember being in a pairing session and one of my colleagues asked Copilot to implement a sorting function because um, I think if I recall correctly, we were working on like a file tree and we had to move the folders up to the top or something like that. Or maybe they weren't up the top and we had to like unsort them, I can't remember. Uh, and so, you know, Copilot dutifully obliged and produced this code that looked quite reasonable but had a bug in it. I can't remember whether it was, uh, you know, it was not exhaustive in the way it had the conditionals or maybe it had an off by one error or something like that. And I remember my colleagues saying, oh, this is amazing, I can't believe how fast that was. And I'm like, well, it's got a bug, like, we have to read it. And so the problem is with this um, LLM produced code is that just like human code, it's buggy, right? And it has to be reviewed just as critically. And I think if you come to over rely on it without critically assessing it, you're going to wind up with code that is, you know, Swiss cheese garbage. And, uh, and yeah, <coughs> old man yells at GPT. I mean, there's another thing, which is that at my work, most of the intellectually difficult parts of the job are things that chat GPT can't currently do. So, you know, we're talking about a distributed system that has code that spans uh, repos, locations, languages, um, and for which, you know, local reasoning doesn't really get you where you need to go when you're trying to solve a bug, because you need to know what the different parts of the system were, where, where are, you know, how they, how they interact with one another, and sometimes, you know, historical context that is not in the code, but in the commit messages or the PRs or the issues, or even worse, you know, in Slack or in somebody's head. Um, and so understanding why things are the way they are or how they must be and what the constraints are is like the hardest part of the job. And no matter how much context you feed into an LLM, which by the way, you can't feed that much context into one, um, it's never going to be able to solve those non-local reasoning problems. When I say never, I mean the current, the current generation of implementations is, is never going to be able to do that. There needs to be some kind of order of magnitude leap forward in which the LLM can suddenly ingest like all of the context available in a particular corporation in order to be able to do a job that is as good as a human can do um, at their best, you know. And so for the stuff that's actually hard and interesting, you know, ChatGPT or Copilot is not really doing a useful thing uh, for me. And so really I found myself only wanting to use it for these little things like I demoed of like, you know, I'm working in a, in a context like Zeesh where, you know, I'm not writing Zeesh functions every day and I can easily forget how some of the more complicated param parameter expansion features work. And so it's really handy to be able to just say, what does this thing do? And, you know, once again, the answer might be wrong, uh, but at least it can sometimes allow you to rule out things that won't work or at least give you leads for things that you can try or strings that you can search for in the absolutely enormous man page where, where you otherwise aren't going to find anything. Um, and so... I do find it useful for that. And I'm optimistic that these things will become more useful in the future, but for the time being, um, yeah, they, they're they not quite there. Um, and the other thing is, some of the work that they do uh, robs me of some of the stuff that I enjoy the most. Like, I'm not saying I enjoy writing thousands of lines of boilerplate, I'm sure I'll, I'll happily use ChatGPT to get rid of that, but um, a lot of things about, you know, how you craft code, how you sequence things, just the work of, crafting things with, with Vim um, by hand, like a lot of that work ends up getting taken away if you lean too heavily on, on the bot. And so that, that's another reason why I'm, why I'm old man yelling at cloud. Um, in the meantime, like there are some places where ChatGTP is absolutely freaking delightful. And you know, even though it's not a sentient being, it's kind of fun to play with it and tease it and see what silly things you can trick it into doing. Um, and so, you know, I, I just like, I, I like asking it absurd questions and seeing how well it can do it. And sometimes it just like does like amazing job of it. Like, um, uh, you know, can you turn the code into a sonnet that is still valid Lua, right? Um, 
it's a bit tricky, but yeah, let's have a try. <laughs> so um, it, it's probably not the best son sonnet that's ever been written, but yeah, I just think it's really cool. You can play with it and get it, get it things to um, to do stuff like this. Um, so yeah, that's that's all for this, um, and hope you're having a great weekend because you are watching this on the weekend, right? Because I'm about to upload it on Saturday, and I know you're hanging out waiting for it. Um, and yeah, I'll see you again soon. And yeah, catch you around. Bye.